Hello and welcome to another edition of Contact with the Beyond, Paratalk. Today, with Julie Adriani. Hello, how are you? Hi, Marcus. Very nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you to being here with us today. Julie says, cards are talking to her. Our topic today, Julie, are tarot cards. Question, Julie. When was the tarot card first created? Well, that is still controversial. The Italians claim it as Parucci, and um, it's from the 15th century. Of course, in those days, only the rich could have them commissioned because they were hand painted. So that there is a big history of original origin in Italy, but the Egyptians and the Chinese also have um, a little bit of history there that might even be a little older. Mm -hmm. uh, what does, does the word tarot, what does it mean? Tarot, um, mm -hmm. it's all about uh, secrets and the, and the arcana. The arcana is actually a, a Latin word for secrets. So it's all about unveiling the secrets. And Tarucci was actually a card game, almost like what we would know now as a pinnacle or rummy. So mm -hmm. it was created in that likeness. So it was not used to tell the future, to analyze circumstances of life. It was to play cards, right? It was a family game originally. Uh -huh. Although I believe with the Egyptians and their history, I believe that this is where the mystical aspect came from. Uh -huh. And did they use every time the same images or was it on the beginning very different and through time there was an evolution of maybe the images and colors they used? Yes, yes, the images have changed. Images, they're very similar and the symbolism, of course, is similar, but it would depend on the artist. So the artist mm -hmm. had a lot of input into the cards. Mm -hmm. So they are made up of major arcana and minor arcana. Yes. What's the difference? Okay, so the major arcana, they represent our big life lessons. So mm -hmm. for instance, if you got a reading and you got mostly major arcana cards coming up for you, then you know you will be facing a lot of life, huge decisions coming up. The minor arcana are all about our everyday trials. Okay, and how many cards, uh, a complete set, how many cards uh, do you work with? Well, it's the full deck of Tarot is 78 cards. So there are 22 major arcana and um, 56 minor arcana. And you have to learn all by heart? Well, you learn them as you use them. So <laughs> when, I, when I teach, I do have a little bit of easier way because my students tend to do well. I have them really focus on the author's intention because tarot is built on a structure and that structure stays, the major arcana and the minor arcana. So you can start learning with just the major arcana with the 22s but if you start with symbolism you're going to open a new reference library for yourself and if you're clairvoyant it it really helps and it helps open your clairvoyance the more you use the cards it's you're working with your psychic energy mm -hmm. So tarot is a psychic tool. Every symbol and every single color, every shape has a vibration and energy in it. I'm getting every time confused if someone tells me something about tarot and tells, oh yeah, I have not the traditional set 
like you have it, you were showing it. This is the most common set what people know around the world. But there are other th sets, they are very different. We have from uh, Alistair Crawley a set, what is, by the way, wonderful, and people think he is a black, black magic person, and, 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 and maybe he was it, but he has a wonderful set for tarot cards. But there are so many different sets. How I have to understand it in context of vibration, form, shape, and energy, doesn't, it doesn't matter, or is it important in your opinion? Well, that you feel, use a specific one. I feel it's important for you to use what you are drawn to. Because mm -hmm. like us, we all have a different vibration. And we might be yes. attracted to a different, a different deck. Mm -hmm. So for me, for years, I felt attracted to this um, Rider Waite deck. But I felt the vibration. It was very strong and very powerful. I, I find a lot of people will say, well, I'll read Oracle decks, but I don't, I don't do tarot. <laughs> but what they're connecting to is the vibration, the energy, the history, and all the ritual that has came down through those thousands of years. So mm -hmm. I feel that this is what you're feeling, and it's nothing, nothing at all to be afraid of. Do you stick on the traditional interpretation of each single card or you say, I don't care, they have for me a different, um, a different meaning? Meaning, yes. <laughs> um, for me, I felt it was very important to honor the tradition and honor the author's intention. So mm -hmm. for me, I learned the, the author's intention and their interpretation, then I go ahead and I use and add my own intuition. But how would you like to put all the work into it? I mean, they're very powerful and they've been used for centuries. So why would you not want to tap into that? Yeah, I must say I have, I have used tarot cards for over 20 years now and I didn't I have the feeling I have to stick on the traditional um, interpretation of the cards. And I saw it together with the numbers, interpretation of numbers and colors and, 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 and I got very near to something what is not written in an official book about cards. But it worked perfectly for me after I did it this way to interpret uh, the interpretation of situations. Mm. Yeah, so it's all about how you want to work with them. But for me personally, I try, I learned the traditional value and interpretation, but because there's so much astrology in there, certain cards, there's astrology, there's numerology, like you said, with the colors, there's still so much else to springboard off of. So yeah, exactly. if you don't remember all of them, because there are a lot of cards, if you're not reading every day and you're not using every day, you're not going to remember them all. But I always tell everybody, pick a card a day, at least for yourself. And throughout time, you're going to learn them. You're going to understand the feeling, what feels right. Honestly, I have to say, I it took me maybe five years or maybe a little bit more to get comfortable with the interpretation. When you choose a card, only choose it from the deck, from the main deck, it has an energy. Nothing is by, by chance that you pick these cards. You have to load the cards with something like energy and then you will pick the right one. I think when you just started with it, with a new card deck, doesn't have the energy and it, it is not working as good as an yeah let us say an old deck or old cards you use for a certain period of time do you agree yes as a matter of fact this deck is from 1975 wow very, very old they're kind of sticky but i love it and i'm very attuned with it 
when I, and then I have, you know, I have a lot of decks, but when I first get a deck for me, I want to blend with it. I want my energy to blend. So I might take it to bed with me. I might have it on my nightstand. I keep them in my purse. So I want it in my auric space. Mm -hmm. So I feel it's very important that you, when you get a new deck, you keep it with you for a week or two to blend your energy and connect with that deck. Sometimes we are in good mood, sometimes we are in bad mood. And when you touch your cards, they take as well the negative energy. How do you clean your cards from negative energy? Is it possible? Or you say, well, the next day I feel good, and when I touch it, I delete the negative energy. Is it like that? Again, it's your personal preference. You can just clear them with intention, or you can clear them with a nice crystal, or so I do multiple readings back to back or on Facebook Live. So you can just tap the cards and it clears, clears the energy as long as you're setting your intention. Many people they say, let it next to uh, salt or make a salt ring around the cards, it is cleaning as well. I never tried it. Um, I was listening to it. I said to myself, well, could be. I'm not against the idea. Everything has a vibration, salt as well. Maybe it works. What do you think about it? Does it I work? Think, um, yeah, salt works. So any of the elements work. So salt would be of the earth. You could also use like... Um, a bowl, any kind of bowl, it doesn't have to be, a, you know, a sound bowl, but you can put sand, you can put Himalayan salt, you could put any kind of salt is good because that represents earth and you can leave them, clear them overnight or open, put them in a window by the full moon. So whatever mm -hmm. you're attracted to. Um, mm -hmm. Air, you can clear them just with your breath with intention or you can use incense, you can use sage, you know, you can run each card over the sage as you are, you know, burning the sage or whatever, frankincense, whatever you like to burn. What I, what I like to do is I think every sound has a vibration and vibration is cleaning as well. So I um, place them maybe next to the speaker and I have specific sounds, I listen the day. Uh, because it cleans the environment around me. And so I have every time the impression it helps as well uh, in context of the card deck. And uh, that's the way how I clean the card. Many people, they say, well, because we are using every single day maybe the cards, we put our energy inside and the energy is communicating with us that we choose in context of our questions the right cards question. What is sitting in the power? Is it, is it you? It is the higher self? Is it something very different? From which point of view would you say, well, we communicate with our subconscious, it is only us? Or is it a higher being? What do you think about it? So for me, sitting in the power is a process of clearing your mind. It's a process of sensory deprivation. I take away as many senses as possible. I like to sit in the dark. Some people like to put headphones over their ears, but in a sense, it's sitting with your own soul. You want to get to know your own vibration so well. You're not trying to connect with any other spirits you're only sitting with your own soul feeling your own vibration getting to know everything about your heartbeat everything that you know your body function you will feel everything and just sitting there and connecting just with your own soul and this is how you learn very easily to feel when one of our spirit friends come in or when something else comes into your form feel because as you sit in your own soul, you're expanding, you're building, you know, 
you're building your power after you sit in the power to connect with spirit. But sitting in the power is just sitting with your own soul, getting to know your own soul and vibration. And it's what is what is the difference between sitting in power and meditation? Is there so a difference? It, to me, there's a little, there is a difference because there's a lot of different forms of meditation. And meditation is a practice of slowing your mind down. And it really works and it's helpful to sit in meditation before it prepares you for sitting in the power. Because so many people have their, their minds are busy and it's really hard for them to relax and slow down. So with the different forms of meditation, um, guided meditation, focused meditation. So for me, there are two different practices. Okay. How often is recommended to use cards? Some people, if they are in trouble, they use it every single hour to see has the situation changed. But I personally think it is not so good to use it for everything, for every single question. When you do it maybe every two days and you ask, what's going on inside my life? Uh, I have little problems. Which way should I choose? What would, would be the better option? It is enough for me but some people say well once a week is more than enough what's your opinion i feel like it depends on what you're doing if you're learning then i recommend every day pulling a card more than once a day is too much you don't want to pull a card for every situation because we're supposed to use our own mind and our own free will but for learning, it's very good. Not maybe just one card a day. Typically, when we're going through, like you said, situations in our life where we might need guidance, I have done uh, three cards every day, say when I was going through trials in my life. Mm -hmm. If everything's going great, I might only do them once a week. You know, but they're just near and dear to my heart and they're always around and they're a big part of my practice. So I do them maybe maybe one card once or twice a week, but there there can't be too much because you don't you don't want to do it for every decision. You don't want to pull a card for every decision. No. That pops up directly the next questions in my uh, the next question in my mind. Where are the limits? Where you say, well, here you can ask the cards, but this you wouldn't get a correct answer. Is there a limit where you say, here I trust in the cards, they give me every time the right answer, and when I go beyond, it is unsecure to get the right answer. Where are the limits? Well, first of all, you have to understand that the cards are going to show you probabilities or energetic influences that are in your life. Nothing is 100%. They're not going, they're not fortune telling cards because everything depends on your free will. Mm -hmm. But they can show you probabilities and influences happening in your life. Would you, you are so experienced in it. Many, many years you did it. Would you trust 100% your own card readings? I have learned to trust them. <laughs> 100%. But, but all, is, all is in the flow. All can change the next 10 minutes. Depends on our decision or of, on the decision of other people. Um, and like I said, uh, like you said before, it is a possibility. We, we work here with possibilities, the highest possibilities reflected in the card. But when all is in the flow, is it not changing maybe from one moment to the next? Well, yes, everything's in constant motion and in constant change. But let me say it's also very important 
we just you touched on it just a, a moment. Um, it's very important for you to be clear before you pull cards, before you read cards, especially if you're reading for anybody else and yourself. You want to have a clear mind, be calm, so that your energy doesn't influence the cards. So with that being said, yes, everything is constantly changing. That's why, say, if you're doing a three-card spread, past, present, future, you might not fully understand the, the influence of the future card because it hasn't yet happened and maybe all the circumstances aren't falling into place yet. But mm -hmm. I always have people call me back or a week or two later because they might not understand the card in right that day but circumstances change and then they understand it but here maybe i should say circumstances like i said they don't change from one moment to, uh, to the next because we when we deal with people and our question is about people we have a specific behavior what we do in circumstances or difficult situations and it is every time rep repetitive we, we do it in the same way. This means it is not changing that um, our personality is changing and our decisions, what we do or what we would do in specific situations. So it, there is a, a specific stability in the human beings. If not, the whole world would, would be a mess, a chaos. So it is not so extreme as I put it before. And so, yes, we can trust the cards, but we have every time keep in mind there are some influences, they change maybe from one week to the next week, the outcome of uh, a question we had before. Yes. Let me go a little bit further to the next question. Yeah. Julie, what is the difference between mental medium, mediumship and physical mediumship, is it somehow connected? Okay, so we're jumping from our psychic work now onto our mediumship. And yeah, as a big jump. <laughs> yeah, so but the psychic work is the foundation of our mediumship because mm -hmm. it helps us do our, um, our psychic sit up, strengthen our clairs. And our clairs belong to our soul, which we use in both. So, but mental mediumship is subjective. Okay, that's the big difference. And physical mediumship is objective. Physical okay. mediumship is where everybody present is going to experience, feel, hear, see the same thing. So that's the thing. Um, Mental mediumship is subjective, and physical mediumship is objective. If we are using the cards to analyze situations, is it possible that the spirit world is expressing from their own point of view through the cards what is going on in your life? Or would you say, well, no, uh, the spirit world doesn't work with cards and uh -uh. What do you think about this idea? It's my experience that I am working with my psychic energy when I'm working with cards. It's a psychic tool. Now, that doesn't mean if I'm reading someone with the cards, that doesn't mean that my psychic energy doesn't lift me up and raise the vibration where I cannot connect mediumistically, but they're two different things. When you're working with the, the cards you're using your psychic energy but on the other hand I feel that it's possible that you will reach that connection of mediumship through the connection through building up your energy because mm -hmm. psychic is one level mediumship is a different level it's different, mm -hmm. different energy what is a seance Okay, so a seance is where there is a coming together of like-minded people with the intention of spirit communication. And when we uh, form these groups, 
it's always best to meet on a certain particular day, say if you're going to have a seance once a week or once a month, always on the same day and always at the same time. You want to have as much consistency as you can because you're setting a date to work with the spirit people and you don't want to break that date. So you have better luck and better phenomena if you keep everything consistent. And you have to have um, intention. You have to have um, regular people. If, if it's an open seance, that's different. But when you're first doing seance work, it's best to have the same people meeting at the same day and the same time. Mm -hmm. Next, what's there the there's in context of this a protocol. Why is it in place and what does it mean? Okay, so protocol are protocols generally rules or how you want to, yeah, formula. Okay, and it's very important because most mediums and historically mediums were working with ectoplasm with physical mediumship in the seance room, and that is very sensitive to light. So the protocols are so important. You have to sit in the dark, you have to cover all the windows, you have to make sure um, in our stances people are not allowed to wear jewelry or anything shiny that could reflect light because it's it's about safety what? for the medium. It's ectoplasm is sensitive. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with Helen Duncan. But her seance, it was a very large seance and it was interrupted by police and lights were put on. So what happens is she was in the middle of her seance and there was ectoplasm extruding from her body and it got snapped back with the light and it came back into her body with such force, speed, and it can burn the organs the internal organs of the medium. It's very powerful. So this is why the safety protocols are in place. I connect every time light with something what is positive and dark with something what is negative. Why ectoplasm is so sensitive to light? Well, Am I wrong with my interpretation about positive and light? and negative and dark? For me, it's just a color. It's just a vibration. I, I don't associate dark with negative. Mm. Because if you think about creation in a mother's womb, there's no light. Creation happens. It's in the darkness. Mm -hmm. OK? OK. And sometimes ectoplasm shows as dark as black. It's in different colors between different mediums. It depends on your own personal vibration, your DNA. It gets lit up in the dark for people to see. So with the manifestation, with form, it lights up. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see it, right? Mm -hmm. But there is also photoplasm. There are pe there's energy work now being done that manifestation takes place. But I don't... That's your human mind putting the negative to the darkness, probably, because it's only a color. And I work with color a lot when I'm reading people, if I can see their aura. And black is just a different vibration. It's a color, just like gray. For me, gray, it's a darker color, but it's not evil. It's not negative. It's very strange because if I see positive spirits or negative spirits, the positive ones are every time in yellow light. And the negative ones in a dark light. And there are specific ways how they approach me. For example, on the right side, the good ones, the positive ones. On the left side, the negative ones. 
I'm not sure if this has with a specific energy what is working in the body, what is flow, what flows through the body, if it is connected to this or only my subconscious is telling me, oh, there's something on the left side, this is negative, or what is your opinion about it? I think that this is how your spirit team is working with you. Mm -hmm. You understand if they come on the right hand side that they are positive spirits. And it's just it's just how you have developed yourself to work and understand the spirits coming through with your team. Mm -hmm. With my team, often I feel 95% of the time I feel the spirits coming in on the left. And they're not negative or they're just, I feel like we're all multi-dimensional and so we will all have a different vibration. But I know we live in duality, just like there are animals that live underground in the dark, bunny, mm -hmm. you know, and beautiful animals that live above ground. So I just feel like they come in with a different vibration. So, okay. but for you, this is the experience you've had with your guides to understand what kind of spirits you're bringing in or, you know, which direction it's, it's a communication tool for you. This makes sense. Absolutely. Um, Julie, we are almost over with the time, but I would love to go a step back. Okay. Cards. Okay. What are the most important cards for you? Can you show our audience the cards you say they are very important to interpret in the right way? Sure. And going back to the cards too, and what we were talking about with just um, changes coming up, some people will say, I keep getting the same card for the last three months, the same thing, because you haven't moved through the situation or learned the lesson yet. Okay, okay. So that's one thing I want to say. I love, I'll just show you a few cards here. The most popular, everybody always wants to know about their love life or money, right? So here's a few pentacle cards that are very good. This is 10 of pentacles and 10 of pentacles is all about accumulation of wealth, savings and abundance. See, so that's a really good card. Here's Six of Wands. This is also a good abundant card to get. Celebratory card. See, he's got the wreath up there. So it's a very good card to get. Here we have Seven of Pentacles. Taking assessment of what you've built. You're working hard, you know, just assessing where you're at. Feels like he's got a good foundation there, right? Because um, they're all pentacles are all about things in the physical. Now this card here, it's a very special card to get. This is the nine of cups. Cups are all about emotions, happiness, and he looks like a genie, right? Like mm -hmm. whatever you wish for, you're gonna get. You have a lot of manifesting power. Four of pentacles. I like this card too. This tells us though, because he has two as a foundation, you have to watch your spending, not, you know, pay attention to your spending and your saving. So, and then um, this is a wonderful card to get. Happiness, abundance, fulfillment. Now here's a card that people are afraid of and it's, it's a hard card to deal with. Three of swords. So this card could represent a lot of heartache, sorrow, upheaval, broken relationships, okay? And then on the other hand, here is 10 of cups, happiness, abundance, family, good connections. So it's a happy emotional card. Ace of cups, this is a wonderful card. New beginnings, could be marriages happening, births beautiful things in life. And then even this, four of wands, beautiful celebrations, happiness, get togethers. So there's so much symbolism and the symbolism is the language. So one card might have 20 different components 
of symbolism in that card. But when you're reading somebody, all, all of those aren't going to come out. And this is where your um, intuition can help you because what jumps out at you for that particular person? Maybe you're going to see a tiny bird or a tiny animal on the bottom or behind in the water. So that's when your intention comes in with your reading and takes you a little bit further and deeper. But I truly believe in the author and the original intentions and um, there is so much knowledge. I feel like it gives you a lot of strength and power for your reading. I could imagine that many, many people from the audience, they got really interested in learning to read, to interpret cards. You give courses not only specifically for cards. What kind of courses people can take with you? I teach psychic. I have psychic tools class, which includes a little bit on the cards. I teach mediumship or last year we had a course psychic to mediumship so i teach different levels it depends on what level you're at and on my facebook page i, I always advertise i have a specific group called media mixer international where i post a lot of classes but most of all just get in touch you can contact me through facebook or any social media platform and you know i can let you know when the next class is. Anyway, we will, all the links for your uh, Facebook page, uh, we are going to put in the description of our interview so people can reach out to you. We are almost done with the time. One chance. Julie, yes, it was very interesting. Thank you so much that you had time for me to answer all my questions. Uh, time was passing by so fast. I had the impression it was maybe 10 minutes, but 40 <laughs> minutes are gone. It was super interesting. Thank you so much. And I hope see you in a short period of time again in the Paranormal Quartet in English. Yes, that's, I'm looking forward to that. That's a wonderful platform and looking forward to our next guest. And I do the same. In um, card readings every Monday, Mystic Monday is live and free. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Julie, you better thank you. <laughs> yeah. Julie, thank you so much. Thank you, Marcus. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone.